see you. I'm about to have a glass of Irish whiskey. Another reminder of my trip to Ireland. Some of the best made there, Jameson. Actually, I poured this bottle and distilled it myself. There you go. Hey, here's to Ireland. If it went for the whiskey, they could rule the world. Ireland. I didn't want to go. And I knew that ghost from the past would haunt me. It was just like I knew I had Scottish and Irish relatives all over from 150 years ago. And as soon as I got there, I knew they were going to want to see me and they were going to haunt me. They're the last thing I wanted to do. But yet I went. I went to go find out who it is I am. Tim Unleashed. Butch Cassidy, Billy the Kid, Clint Eastwood. We all grew up watching cowboy films. We never think we're actually going to meet one. My first time in America, I met this guy. He was drinking bourbon. He was shooting guns. He was riding horses. I'd met a real life American cowboy. His name, Tim Lovett. How do I know Tim? Tim's my boss. Oh, I mean, uh, he's my father-in-law. We know Tim because Tim is my uncle, my dad, Tom, his twin brother. And Tim is my best friend. Tim is my dad. Tim's my father-in-law. And he is the craziest person I've ever met in my life. Who's Tim? Tim is my dad's brother and quite honestly my favorite uncle for sure. If you asked him who his favorite niece was, hands down he would say me. We're pretty close. Who's this Tim you keep asking me about? No, I don't, I don't know. Well, uh, I've known Tim all my life and uh, I could say one thing about him, I'd say he's crazy. <laughs> He's crazy. Don't believe a word of what he says. It's not true. Stay away from him. <laughs> Stay away from him. Stay away from him. Stay away from him. As soon as I got ready to go, I knew that this was going to be a rough trip. My first flight there, I walked out, and we're in Dublin. It was there I found my daughter and my son-in-law as we spent the week there together. So the Trinity Library was like our first stop and it was beautiful. One of those libraries that I had greatest island I've ever been in was over in Ireland. It was amazing. It was all very old wood. They had ladders that would go up on top of these great, they had like three different levels. They had the oldest book in the world there. The book. <laughs> the book of Kellis. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah, just open the glass up, So it was a beautiful experience. We came in there, walked around. Um, I read probably every book in there that day. Uh, other than that, it was something else. So when we first met up with Tim in Ireland, my first thought was, he made it to Ireland! The rest are excited! And we're jet lagged. So I said, let's go down and have a Guinness. Because the Guinness tastes much better there in, in Dublin. And so we went to the Guinness factory and we toured the whole factory and we tasted Guinness and saw how it was made. This place was like eight levels. Every time I turned around, my dad was missing. So one, two, three. Okay, we need a large closet. We went up to the rooftop sky bar where you can see all of Dublin. We drank some Guinness. There we go. It was amazing. We loved it. And we had air conditioning. That's about all I remember because I feel like I was super intoxicated most of that experience when we first saw Tim. But we did take a really great selfie. What will we do with the drunken sailor? And there in Dublin, I realized this might be my kind of place. It was pub after pub after pub. When we got to the pubs, that's when we got a real first taste of Tim on Leash. They're gonna show me their dingoes. Trust me, man. It's a possibility. Yeah, they're, they're all gonna tell me.
kill me down there. I'm gonna be like an asshole there. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be like, oh my god, that's my uncle Tim. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, somebody remove him. Remove him, security, security. Security guard, don't press it out. No, I'll go around time. I'm Katie's dad. And <laughs> I'm Katie's dad. I'm like, he's not my dad. He's not my dad. There, I had to do a lot of drinking when I was over there in Ireland because I was away from my beautiful wife and my son and his beautiful daughter were not able to make the trip. We would have loved to have gone to Ireland. I mean, it sounds awesome. Um, but I mean, with, you know, with Mariah's job, it's, you know, the hours are tough and, you know, planes are expensive, but uh, yeah, we would have loved to have gone. Yeah, I had work. What did I say about my life? Uh, I've done everything. I've lived, I've loved. <laughs> So I was able to actually get through it, but I never made it without the Jameson. Hey, if it weren't for their whiskey, they'd rule the world. One thing that Tim mentions a lot is that if it wasn't for the whiskey, that the Irish would rule the world. I think he even went so far as to write that in the guest book that yeah. you signed when you tour the place. I've contemplated this saying a lot over the years. I wonder if he's right. Maybe you guys just like do this thing for my funeral. Go ahead and say a few words and you know, each one of you has around there. <laughs> Tim, do you want to say a few words for your funeral? Yeah, Tim. Tim, you, you say it at your funeral. I've been dying 21. to get there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and all the Irish people do is they like to drink and they like to have fun and they're friendly people. Hey, baby, we have a long life. A great experience till we head on down to Dingle. Dingo, the place to mango. <laughs> the world capital of Ireland is Dingo. Mango to your Dingo. <laughs> Tim Unleashed. It's Tim <laughs> Unleashed. <laughs> Dingo's a small city over by the coast, and that's where I really got to see the Irish countryside. The side of Ireland no way sees. This is the side of the farms and old stone houses, and dairy cattle, not a lot of horses. Strangely enough. We enjoyed the countryside, we enjoyed the people, and we enjoyed the Irish customs. And one of their best customs is pubs. You're doing a documentary on this, right? <laughs> what were you saying? <laughs> My dad knows one Irish song, and he sang it the whole trip. When Irish eyes are smiling, that's an Irish lullaby. How's that? Is that good? The first night we got there, we go to a hardware store. I thought we were going in to buy some hammers and nails. We walk in there, it was the only hardware store that I'd ever been in, and it also has a pub in it. They had a singer there that was just doing 90s covers and I was living. Everyone's just crammed in there, everyone's sweaty. The pub is there, they had an Irish singer. Sit there, people came in all night. They bought nails, hammers, they drank beer, and they listened to the Irish performer. And it was honestly one of my favorite times of the trip. It was like my favorite night. Now, where else could you find that? But there in Dingle. The one thing that I was not prepared for in Ireland, it does not get dark till 11.30. It'll be 11 o'clock and the sun's still out and we're going strong. Ugh. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> so we're like, we haven't even had dinner yet because we didn't even know, we thought it was 4.30. I looked down at my watch, it's 11.30 p.m. And I realized, all right, well, what's another day in here? <laughs> There he is! There, there's a bunch of babies! His babies! The next pub we go to, there was an Irish dancer. He was one of the top dancers in the world.
that was an experience you'll never see in America. Only in Ireland will you see that. So I thought, all right, this could be my kind of play. Everyone there, they knew me. They said, ah, Timmy boy, you're having a good time here, Timmy boy. I'd say, having a good time? What could be better? Hanging out with some of my relatives I haven't seen for 150 years? And that's when I realized my relatives. Wait a minute, were these people real? Were they real? A couple times I had to come over and kind of touch them just to see, because I thought I may be seeing things. Because I know I have lots and lots of ghosts in my past. We're going nowhere. All right. And it's a Blair Witch Project. <laughs> Which place is haunted? Fred! This is a new documentary doc. Or Josh is doing a documentary on this. Yeah. So right. later when we left the pubs, that's when things got a little spooky. All right. Hi. Some might say we were a little possessed by the Jameson. No, top it out. Man up. Man up. <laughs> Man up. There's no Ubers in Ireland, so we had to walk everywhere. Our walk to our Airbnb was mainly uphill, so very sweaty, drunken time. We're up on top of a hill. Josh is here videoing everything. Yeah, we're gonna make a documentary out of this. Josh is making a documentary. It's gonna be, it's gonna go viral. Because that will make oh, us a million dollars. Yep. For all of us that were staying in our Airbnb that night, including Tom, Tom would soon find out that the spookiest thing of all was not Tim unleashed. It was the fact that our Airbnb had no air conditioning. Yeah, guess what? Key's going upside down. Yeah, it unlocked. Really? Yeah. No, we locked it. It's really weird. All right. There you go. All right, turn the air conditioner on. There's there is no air conditioner, Tom. There is no air conditioner. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. I'm sure Tim has talked a lot about me so far, about this trip, but let me just start out by saying the beginning of my trip was pretty rough. My mom and I lost our connecting flight and we lost our bags. And what happened was they lost my niece Izzy dress. Can you believe that? The dress. So when we got into Ireland, our whole next 24 hours consisted of finding new dresses for my sister's wedding. I was so mad they had to go buy a dress all because of that stupid airline. And I know it was that baggage handler that I saw out there. And I know he's probably wearing both of those dresses that night and then put them back in there before he ever shipped them back. I could have killed him. The next day, it's time for the wedding. We go to the wedding, we catch a bus that goes over there, and as we're pulling up this big, beautiful Catholic church, huge, we went right by the church and pulled up to a pub. As I got out, I was walking to the church. I was the only one walking to the church. I looked behind me, four buses unloaded, and they all went to the pub. And so, I, what is this? I'll go to the pub then. Is this what we're supposed to do? Well, we're in Ireland, we gotta do what the Irish do. I go in the pub and it is, you think it's four o'clock in the morning. I mean, it is like beer for everybody, whiskey, dingle, everything you can imagine, you know? I'm like, guys, come on, we got a wedding to go to. They're over here waiting on us, everybody. You know what? Ah, right, Timmy boy, come in, have a drink. How's your holiday, Timmy? Let me buy you a drink, Timmy. <laughs> okay, sure, buy me a drink. Okay, there we sit. They're waiting the wedding on us. They have to wait the wedding on us because the whole crowd's in the bar drinking. Finally, I got everybody to leave. We moved everybody. The whole 150, 200 people. We all moved over to the wedding. And the wedding, that was a different story. stars are above you and longer if I can <clears throat> Alright Tim 
tell me where we are. We are in Ireland. Ireland. The land of the leprechaun. <laughs> and what's today? Today is our wedding day. <laughs> Whose wedding day? It is Caitlin's wedding day. <laughs> yeah. Not he all say. <laughs> it's going to be Caitlin O'Shea. Okay. All right. You got anything to say? It was a beautiful wedding. My daughter was in the wedding, and then all of her first cousins, Katie's sisters, all came down the aisle one by one. And then there came Katie. How long will I love you? As long as stars are above you. And longer if I may. That was the first Irish wedding I had ever been to. I'd heard about it, but never been to. There was my niece, Katie, and her cousin, Dahi. That's pronounced Dahi. Dahi, which is very much an Irish name, if anybody did not know that. Dahi and her had the most beautiful wedding. They spoke in both Gaelic and English. It was a beautiful wedding. It reminded me of something out of a prince in a fairy tale. After the wedding, everyone rolled out right to the pub again. And they stayed there until all the buses left and we messed our buses. After about two hours in that pub, they had to bring the buses back. We got back in our bus. Tim, where are we right now? <laughs> We're in Belfast, northern Belfast. I, 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 in the Belfast Mafia. Where are we headed? Heading back to Dingle. Is it, is anything it else you want to say? Nothing else right now. Yeah. Say keep, like, me, keep me in tune. We go over to the reception, which now it is about 4 o'clock. The cocktail hour was four hours. From there, we moved inside at 8 o'clock, and we had a most wonderful dinner, along with more wine and cocktails. and all the speeches. And she can even rap the entire song, Thrills by Nelly, without even skipping the <laughs> Especially when he over when he wanted to play with puppies all day, despite what Kate would have to say. But for those of you who don't know me, well done to the game. I'm also extremely thankful to be joining into the family that I'm joining into today. And I'm not gonna apologize <laughs> for what I did because I love it here in Ireland. And I love the Irish people. <laughs> You know what was the interesting thing is that in Ireland, if you're the father of the bride, you have certain privileges. You get free meals there. People are nice to you. They call you Mr. Lovett. I felt like I was a king. And then all of a sudden, I look around and Tim is telling people that he's me and no one knew there were two of us. So he's getting free drinks, my free drinks at the bar. It was great. I was just sitting there and say, hey, bring me a drink, my man. You know, put that on my tab there. But it really came in handy when we started to challenge the Irish guys to drink in shots. And I would come in and drink three, four shots, and I'd say, I gotta go to the bathroom. And then I sent Tim in to drink three, four shots. They could never figure that out. Yeah. You know? And then at 10 o'clock, they had an Irish man come in, and that Irish man played until one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Yeah.
10 p.m. and you know we're getting a little sweaty our makeup's running down our face and my cousin decided to go upstairs to you know maybe touch up her hair charge her phone do whatever we need to do I decided to go up and get um, my stuff from the room where we had been getting ready and I opened the door to the hotel room and there was Isabel and Lily's luggage so she calls me and she's like, Izzy, your suitcase is here. And I'm like, if this is playing a prank, I'm gonna kill you. And I run upstairs, I'm sprinting through the hallway. And what do you know? I get into my room, there's my suitcase. So I put my dress on. Oh my God, my it's 10.30 at night, everything's done, but I am going to wear this dress for the rest of my night. I could not be happier. I have uh, actually experienced some very good body odor in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. You can think of it like this, right? All day, I've been drinking gas. And then all night, we've been drinking gas. People were gassy. And this place smelled. Oh, God, so bad. And I was like, okay, and then I was like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> It was bad, it was bad. We were like, oh, shit. Sure. Sure. It was definitely one of them. Maybe Dad's having some tummy issues. <laughs> oh, oh, poor guy. Oh, I can smell it out here. It's coming out here. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Do you smell that? No. Yeah. I just got the whip. Like, Maybe it's our deal oh, at this point. Maybe it's even. Dad said somebody farted on Oh, it's not my <laughs> they like to kill me. <laughs> they like to kill me. <laughs> it's my kin. Nally. I go to the bar like this. I'll have a... I'll have a whiskey. You guys, when the DJ comes on, I am breaking it. It may have smelled extremely bad in there, but honestly, those boys really know how to dance. Get ya. Then from one o'clock in the morning, they had a disc jockey come in who played music till somewhere around three o'clock. And the song Old Town Road comes on. And I know how much that man loves his horses. And I tell you this, I have never seen anyone dance so passionately in my entire life. Yeah, I'm gonna take my horse to the old town road. I'm gonna ride till I can't no more. I got the horses in the back. Horse stock is attached, head is mad at black, got the bushes black to match. Riding on a horse, ha, you can whip your Porsche. I've been in the valley, you ain't been up off that porch now. Nah, can't nobody tell me nothing. You can't tell me nothing. Hat down cross town, living like a rock star. Spend a lot of money on my brand new guitar. Baby's got a habit, diamond rings and fins. Sports bras, riding down Rodeo in my Maserati sports car. Got no stress, I've been through all that. I'm like a Marlboro man, so I keep going back. Wish I could roll on back to that old town road. I wanna ride till I can't go. Yeah, I'm gonna take my horse to the old town road. I'm gonna ride till I can't go. from 3 o'clock to 5.30, everyone had more drinks, and they sang Irish songs together. They all took turns singing. Hey! Lord said out of Brandon, here a flight of one. Ho! On a dark and dirty morning, Brandon's voyage had begun. Tired of tin and turnips, and a cut and curly kale. When he got back from the creamery, he hoisted up the sail. Did you know that Honolulu was 
Next morning, we get up, we go down for tour bus. So, called everyone, give them about 15, 20 minutes notice. Hey, listen, we have this shuttle. I just remember you being like, no. No. And, you <laughs> <laughs> and Natalie and I were still very much asleep and I was violently super hungover. hungover. Actually, I think I might have been still drunk, very drunk. I was too. And we're gonna take everyone around. We're gonna go around and see the scenic views of Dinkle. Okay, we're on the Atlantic Ocean, on the coast. Get everybody into this shuttle. This guy's going like 90 miles an hour around these cliffs, okay? I remember Katie saying, be ready in like 10 minutes. And I just said, okay, in the most like disheveled voice or I don't know how to describe All it. All I said was, I, what's the food situation? Yes, yeah. We're on a tour bus. The tour bus has my mother's maiden name on there, Begley. We decided to take a detour to Dottie's parents' house and it was like, your hangover dream. You walk in and there was just carbs. I think everywhere. I ate like 17 pieces of like bread, whatever they had. Bagels, like. there was coffee cream cake. Yeah. Uh, Dahi's mom was like, what can I make you? Can I get you water? I mean, it was paradise for somebody who had been just drinking all night yeah. long. We go to Dahi's mother and father's house. They had a beautiful sheep farm, old stone, right on the beach, backed up to acres and acres of beautiful green land and mountains. In the front of it was all the ocean as the beach came in. It was very remote and very beautiful. Eugene was running the sheep. That was also something that we all got to enjoy too while we were over there. That was like, that was a lot of fun watching Cindy, like Eugene would just come out and just be like, Ugh. and the dog would just take off and corral the sheep. And it was just a lot of fun. And I remember like everybody all being there and just kind of mesmerized. And then the dog started running towards us and then the sheep were following and we were like about to get trampled. And then Eugene was like, you know, he yelled whatever he said in Irish or something. And it like went away. Even though I was super hungover, that was still fun. And so, yeah, that was really fun. And then we piled back into the bus and we went to these really beautiful cliffs where they filmed Star Wars. We moved down to several of the beaches. Some of them were just unbelievably gorgeous with old stone rocks that have been there since the beginning of time as the ocean, untouched by commercialization, was there. You saw what it was really like for the Irish history. So we finally get there and we're in the absolutely the most beautiful postcard-esque view you could ever even think of. Right there, the Atlantic Ocean, the coast, gorgeous, right? Tim looks around and he goes, you know what? This reminds me a lot of Disneyland. And then of 
course, a couple hours go by and it's back to drinking and partying. I mean, we honestly had the best week of our lives. It was so much fun. Sort of an Irish wedding tradition where the day after the wedding, everyone can just kind of relax, let loose, and just have fun, right? I knew it was a big ask, though, because I had asked everybody to drink for about three days straight, right? I just was curious how Tim would cope. What? Are you the one they call Battle Wolf? to, I mean, I thought we were just going to another pub, but this place was like a, a club. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody in the club get tipsy. Everybody in the club get tipsy. Everybody in the club get tipsy. Here comes the five to the four to the three. Here we've been drinking and enjoying a beautiful wedding and reception, but this is only in Ireland. They could never do that in the United States. They could never have two days of fellowship and drinking together and still be friends. I wanted at that point to make my famous toast. I said, if it were not for their whiskey, the Irish would rule the world. But actually I realized the Irish rule the world and their whiskey is just second to that. They were the nicest people that I had met. And you know what they enjoyed the most? Your company, your fellowship, and talking to you and it's there that I realize that my ghost of Ireland are my strengths today and part of me is part of Ireland it's in Irish then the week came to an end and the hardest part was not leaving Ireland. The hardest part was saying goodbye to my daughter. What were you saying? What <laughs> Tim unconscious. Now don't Hello everyone. <laughs> my dad is still drunk. <laughs> Because it was there in Ireland that she wasn't my daughter, she was my daughter, and we had a bond, and a bond that we found in our homeland of Ireland. And I wanted to get on my horse and ride to California to see her again, and I might do that right now. So, happy trails. It's in Irish lullaby. Yeah! Tim Unleashed! I'm Unleashed! Tim Unleashed! So there you have it. Tim Unleashed. What a journey. What an adventure in Ireland. I know I enjoyed it. I invite you to come over with me next time and we'll have a glass of scotch, a glass of Irish whiskey, and whatever else the best beer in the world. I've been through the desert on a horse with no name. It felt good to be out of the rain. In the desert, you can remember your name. Cause there ain't no one for to give you no pain. La, 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 la.
my skin began to turn red After three days in the desert fun I was looking at a riverbed And the story it told of a river that flowed Made me sad to think it was dead You see, I've been through the desert on a horse with no name It felt good to be out of Tim Unleashed! 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 Great, great, great week with me and Josh. Tim Unleashed. We bonded, Josh and I have. Yeah. yeah. But he doesn't know that. Bonding means he's my male bond servant. <laughs> he's my some slave over in Ireland. <laughs> yeah. Get the back. <laughs> <laughs> This is where I belong. The land of Ireland. The land of the leprechauns. The land of the charms. Did you pop that pinball? Oh, you got it. We could have filmed that as part of the documentary. Yeah, I could have popped your pinball for the documentary. <laughs> I walked up to him and I said, do you have a problem? And he said, are you two brothers? And we said, no, we've never seen each other before. We are people who are interested in finding out what the problem is. Do you have a problem? Ireland, all these little guys look like they're from Notre Dame. You know, got a pipe. Dad made me take so many shots last night. <laughs> Dad was like, Jameson all around. <laughs> Jameson all around. Tim, where are we? Huh? Yeah. Where are we? Hey, where are we? Where are we? We're here to find our, our heritage here. Uh, but we found out that it's not Ireland, Scotland. So we're heading to Scotland. Okay. You have to do it. Uh. <laughs> Tim, tell me, where are we? Tell the camera. Tell, What's the, that? tell the folks at home. Northern, Northern Belfast. Sorry, back up a little bit. Just back up just a little bit. Give a little bit. <laughs> well, my father was actually the first person to offer me a drink. I was. Uh, about six years old. So there I was, now in Ireland. So. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, was I ever nervous that Tim was coming to Ireland? I was dead nervous. They're so happy to get rid of us. I know. They're like, they never, get these Americans yeah. out of here. That's why they, they never, they're always laughing. You enjoying your trip? Yeah. Oh, they're like, oh, God, hey, when you're heading back, buddy. <laughs> Sawyer, what do you think of Tim? Sure, the dog food for Tim. This is what they do with their dog poop. Dog poop. Right there. You see that? Those are dead people. <laughs> Those are the burrows. They're dog bags in, a, in one spot. I guess, I don't know. I'm like, who cleans this up? Whose job is that? He took me to the Silver Spur, which is this cowboy store, and he bought me a shirt and almost bought me a hat, too. Some would call that grooming, but yeah. call it what you may. Am I nervous to do the interview? No, no. Tim would never fire me. He definitely loves to be outside, loves his horses. Maybe it's a little bit too much at times. He probably spends the night outside with his horses, I would say. Could he be this guy? He likes to drink. He could be Irish. I kind of see things, though, that maybe 
Tim would marry one of his horses. That's when the sweat started coming off. Doing smells weird. I smell a smelly smell. That smells smelly. Irish half down. It smells very bad. It's very hot. It's very hot. It's very hot. I had a blast, but the people inside were experiencing a different blast. <laughs> The saddest part was leaving Ireland, and it wasn't because it was leaving Ireland, it was because start over back. Good morning, people. This is the Dharma experiment. I'd just like to say this is the example of the Irish countryside. This is a lot of artwork here with this fence. As it comes up and it kind of makes a turn there like that, years and years in the making. So what do a lot of people don't know about our family? We had the title of Lord. It was Lord Lovett. And I kept that towel in high school. I thought it was great. The girls liked it, but nobody else liked it. They called him Lord LaVey. Little Lord Fauntleroy. <laughs> oh, you know what? I could just kill that guy. I could just take this axe and I could just throw it. I could have killed that guy. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you there. About to enjoy a nice Jameson scotch from Ireland. Fuck that up. If you know Tim, you know he loves his horses, he loves his whiskey, and most of all, he loves himself. I thought you were gonna say his daughter. <laughs> hey, and that's Ireland. That's where men are men, and maybe the women are men. I don't know, I didn't find out. But, all right. If you follow me, come on, come on, you can follow me. <laughs> if you see through here, many of you might think, that that's the Irish countryside. Actually, what that is is a big quilt that comes down, and they do that at every house to make you feel at home like you're in Ireland. <laughs> so, enjoy your trip to Ireland if you come over here, please. Yay. One of Tim's many talents is his ability to pull off a variety of accents, both domestic, international, you name it, he'll attempt it. He's inspired me to try and perfect my American accent make it as good as, as his attempts. So here goes. Mr. Tim and Mr. Tom Lovett, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you both very much for being able to attend my wedding in Ireland. It was awesome to have both of you guys there and it will be a memory that I will cherish forever. I owe you guys some beers and some hamburgers the next time I see you. All right, so Dahi, I saw Dahi. D-A-I. Then Tom was out there dancing with his laddie, and that's when I knew he liked these scots on the rocks. <laughs> Nelly and Greg elected to stay at a hostel. Now, I've never stayed at a hostel, but what I understand about hostels is that you have 14 people in a room that you've never met in your life. So, I said, Greg, you better be careful. And then Tim said to Greg, Craig, it's gonna be up to you to take it for the team, okay? Yeah, we should probably cut this part out, but... How many people are gonna see this? Well, I don't know. And then, also, Greg, I understand that you do sleep face down. That's a good thing. That'll kind of, you know, kind of distract everybody, right? You know, the last thing we heard is that he woke up in the middle of the night, and he was asleep, and he was screaming, get off of me, get away from me, get away from me. I don't know what happened, you know? You know, Greg's never been the same after that. Yeah, never been he, the same. His his like eyes have been like bloodshot, and yeah. he like where he doesn't sleep I, at I night. I can tell the difference. Yeah, yeah I can, I can too. You know. Same. That was a week that I'll never forget. I don't know if I dreamed that or was that really real. Ah, I see my Jameson whiskey over there. Ah, that was in a dream. I know it was real. And now you know exactly why I did not go to Ireland.